Inside Nigeria, keeping you informed on what matters. Good morning, viewer and listener out there. This is Inside Nigeria for Friday. Welcome to the show. Of course, as usual, we shall be dissecting from prominent front page stories of uh, some dailies. Uh, and today I'm not alone uh, on the show. My colleague, Rukaya Sadoki, is joining me for the first time. Rukaya, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. All right, good. Welcome to Inside Nigeria. And of course, our guest, an Abuja based public affairs analyst, Samaila Musa, is back on the show. Samaila? Yeah, thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. Well, let's go there, viewers. We are starting with Nigeria's first Friday newspaper. The leadership Friday. Sharing formula for political offices, TS Zamfara APC apart. Sharing formula for political office holders, TS Zamfara APC apart. And this is as a result of uh, Governor Mutawale's defection to the APC. Just after one month after his defection, Samaila, we are having crisis in the party. Yeah, I mean, this crisis was actually always just a crisis waiting to happen you know anybody who is conversant with how these things work out will always know that this is bound to happen i mean and this is just the beginning anyway uh, whatever peace talk you see holding in different fora to make sure they bring them together nigerian politicians will never come together because some people are feeling aggrieved they are feeling so changed that we have worked for the party we have worked for we are the one who built apc in the states and all of a sudden from nowhere you give it to someone to you know and not just giving it to him but you know of course automatically you know, as a sitting governor he becomes the leader of the party you know whereas some people are feeling i'm supposed to be a godfather at the stage in this state so if this is this kind of thing is happening they feel oh this is a slight you shouldn't be rubbing this on my face so really that will never because without and how do you achieve justice because without justice there would never be peace and I don't see any formula you can put in place to say there's going to be justice in this case because a sitting governor always feel he's the number one in the state. So all other persons should come under him. And in this case, they did actually didn't play any role for his emergence as a governor. So he wouldn't want to even want to yield or, you know, because there's just some kind of conception you have for your godfather. But it's coming to their platform now. It's coming to their party. Yeah, yeah it's coming to their party. So you to your house, plan. some people are already occupying the house you right? see the way it's fa it's, it's 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 factored in nigeria is that even if it's a two days to election if you have a sitting governor you rather prefer to have him <laughs> and discard the others you understand because that name oh now we now have no social number of states in our kitty but really let's look at the bone of contention look at the writers uh, below the list story of the leadership yeah. uh governor demands 70 percent gives 30 percent to yari oh. marafa and others and it's 50 50 deal or nothing as governor's camp insists says matawale can't automatically inherit state party structure look at the bone of uh, well it, it's unfortunate but you see the way it is it is automatic here in nigeria he ins inherits the structure because he's also looking at the next election this is beyond what's happening now i mean what office is as important because for him it's not about working in the states. It's a party issue. He's looking at 2030. I mean, I don't know when is their own election coming again. It's still 2023. Yeah? Yes, yes. So please. he's looking at it from that perspective of what happens in 2023. I want to go for a re-election. I can't afford to have my enemies holding key positions in this party. You know, so and that's the, the problem. There is nothing they can do. Of course, he is taking the lion's share. But if you ask me, it, that's fair. That's not fair to some people. You understand as a sitting governor he wants to but you see the problem actually is this even if you make it 50 50 it will solve solve mm -hmm. the problem the problems will still be there we have the marafa faction also who was already at loggerheads with the yeah. yaris camp that has not been resolved now you are complicating the issue so really they're going to be having this because different factions but yeah i mean this is just an introduction to what's going to happen in the next uh, one year all right so don't kill them and how you to do business let's go to business yeah nigeria refinery is to go to go for more they spent two trillion spent on revenue um so as my like are this um spend is justified uh, well it, you see it, it it might be justified in some other climbs not in nigeria actually you you might be able to justify that in some other climbs to say oh 
once this small x amount of money is earmarked for so so thing it's definitely going to be used for the exact thing which they claim it's going to be used for it's only in nigeria that you find that half of that money is going to go into you know uh, meetings you're going to have a delegation of about a delegation of maybe two people can go source for whatever they need to do this revamp but you're going to have a 20 man delegation this will be going to america another 20 man the same 20 man delegation will also be sponsored to go to brazil and different countries like that so the half of the money is being spent in, because by the time you look into the budget and you see how much they are spending for just travels alone if you're wondering what are they traveling are they this traveling the amount a mark for it is it that to bring those equipments and I can tell you for a fact that these refineries are old refineries. They, they are going out of fashion world over, really. It's easier for you to have a new refinery, which I don't think Nigerian government can afford to do because the maintenance will be a problem if this government handling it. So most of these equipment are out of date. In some cases, you have to go source from other refineries who maybe change their own or something because i mean for how many years new refineries are having newer equipment now so some of those things that got spoiled you really have to go different places to go source for it maybe from some other refineries that you feel go through a uh, 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 haulage or maintenance from time to time so it's a hell lot of problem but i tell you nigerian culture is more than half of that money will be filtered away to some people but uh, I, I, for me i also see corruption Plain because why would the refineries got more money despite two trillion naira already spent on revamping them? Because just because we cannot sell uh, sell them as, as dead refinery or as crafts, but then there are two models of refinery uh, management. There is the public, yeah. where the government is the one in charge, oh. and there is the private. Yeah. You understand? So in this case, probably they want us to hands off the refineries to the hands of our private uh, uh, people. people, but then. But then, the money that have been sunk into these refineries over years, mm. in, under the guise of uh, turnaround maintenance, maintenance, is huge. And I believe, or I know that when selling these uh, refineries, we may not be able to recoup back our money. At the end of the day, Nigeria will be at loss. Yeah. And people use all most of these projects, refining, turnaround maintenance, and the rest of them to actually make money yeah. for themselves. Yeah, that's why I said, even this money budgeted, more than half of it is going to go into some people's pockets. That is a normal culture in Nigeria. That was why I cited the instance of there will be maybe minimum of a 20 man delegation that will be traveling from one country to the other, spending more than half of this money because it, it, it's not justifiable. How, can, how do you justify two trillion naira spent and you can't really lay your hands on what is being used for? Yeah, no functional. Maybe they need to sit down with Dan Bute and start well. asking him, how much does it cost you so to do the eventual like refinery? You, you understand? So that we know, is it do we keep sinking money into this rebound, this maintenance, or let's just take this money and just go build another one? And you know, maybe if you want to do uh BOT, I mean build operate transfer yeah. kind of system or something. But this is it, it's it's a culture in NMPC. Nepal once had the same culture, some people are there. They are the oracles behind the whole thing. Even when they retire, they put their people there. Nothing goes around. They are the ones to supply. They are, they are the owners of those companies who are doing all those things. Sure. You understand? So you are guaranteed that there's nothing that's going to come out of it. Because once you do it, effectively, once and for all, then you're going to take food out from their table. And they won't allow that to happen. And that's the problem with this country. Well, if Dangote can do it, I think the almighty federal government of Nigeria can do the same. Let's yeah. go to the next newspaper, The Punch. Relief for seconders as PDP Board of Trustee Takus Wiki rejects interim ESCO. Relief for seconders as PDP Board of Trustee Takus Governor Wiki rejects interim ESCO. This is a report about the outcome of the BOT meeting of the PDP, yeah. which held yesterday at the Wadasa Plaza National Headquarters of the party. What is your take? Okay, well, I think oh, first uh, the BOT has done the right thing because it's a party issue. We shouldn't have one man dictating the, the tune simply because he pays, you know, the piper. So 
we should move away from where just one single man dictates everything that happened in a party. If you have a, a, a BOT, it should have been their responsibility. But again, if you want to be fair to Wiki, you can't take it away from him. We know what played out at a point where all of them ran away from PDP when Alimani Sharif and you know was having issues with PDP. They all left the past party alone. Wiki single-handedly, you know, brought the party back to life. Yeah, I, I, rumors had it that he spent billions even within the, 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 the judiciary. You, you understand, monies went round and all of that. And because of that, he feels, look, I had to call the shots. Because where were you when we were having these issues? You all ran away. You know, immediately Buhari came in. Some of them ran away. They felt, oh, this man is going to come after me. Everybody went silent. You know, so it was a period of silence where you don't even have any opposition in the country anymore. But he brought the party back to life. But having said that, that is not enough for only him to single-handedly call the shots. But I think one of the issues he's having with uh, uh, Secondos is that, look, I made you. You, do, you understand? That I made you. You were a nobody in, 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 in reverse. I, I put you there as the party chairman. From there, you came. I brought you. I single-handedly put you there as the party chairman of PDP. So he's feeling, look, your loyalty should be to me. I should be the one that is telling you what to do because you are nobody and I brought you here and this is not the, you know, whatever we agreed on, it, it should be followed to the latter. So really, that's one of the major, major problems, you know. So really, it, it is a time for uh, uh, PDP as a party to reflect on uh, what has gone wrong, which way forward. But I blame uh, Secondus also in the sense that as a party chairman, you have failed. If one, two, you know, I can count on my fingers how many governors have left the party within the shortest possible time. Mm -hmm. You all had this report before they happened. You all know the grievances. Why can't you do something at that time? Whatever it takes you to make sure that nobody leaves the party, except who maybe, maybe one person should have been, oh, okay, this person, we have tried all our best. He has made up his mind. This is what he wanted to do. But you see, as it must be, there must be a crisis for one, two, three to just be leaving. And we're not just talking about oh, party members. We're talking about it, it state governors leaving the party uh, in droves. So really, it 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 shows some kind of uh, incompetence on the side as a party chairman that uh, you know that PDP will not be uh, can can mm -hmm. afford to have for for a long time. Now look at some cases against the condos. The riders are uh, below the list story on the punch. Uh, PDP chieftain says seconders must complete tenure. Yes. But at the same time, they faulted the party chairman's handling of crisis, which you just mentioned that yeah, he yes. was unable to yes. handle some handle matters some uh, crisis, correctly, yeah. which led to the defection of the three governors that yeah. led the party. Yeah. Now, the PDP or the board of trustees of the party has set up a conflict resolution committee mm. to look into this crisis and come up with a, with a report. At the same time, cautioning its members against unguarded well, I think uh, you won't say, oh, it's coming at the wrong time. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's never too late. But, uh, you know, they saw all these things coming. They, they were, you know, relaxed. Uh, and, you know, the damage done. Because, it, it, I mean, a serious party will spend everything it takes to make sure that those governors did not leave that party at the time they left. Because this is a time where we're just looking at 2023. You can't take it. It's politicking. Everybody can be taken along. I mean, interest can be, you look into it and harness and all of that. But of course, it's never too late. Let the board of uh, uh, trustees, I mean, uh, the board set up to look into this conflict. This committee should do the needful, you know. But of course, you know, what we realize in most cases when you have this kind of issues is that the committee set up, some persons already have their own interest. And that's why even the picking of the committee will have to be who is loyal to who. That is going to be make I mean membership of that committee, and most times it doesn't really end well because they've already the judgment has been I mean concluded before they even start working on it. So it's more. But if they put the right people who will be fair enough to you know look into every one dispassionately, you dispassionately that the, that's good for the party. All right, Samala, we need to go on a short break, okay. and we'll be back soon.
Inside Nigeria, keeping you informed on what matters. Welcome back to Inside Nigeria. Of course, we still have Samaila Musa in the studio with us. Samaila Musa is an Abuja Bay public affairs analyst. Samaila, we were talking about the PDP before we went on a short break. Now we move away from the porch to the next newspaper, The Vanguard. Okay. Vanguard crisis. Stakeholders rally to save APC and PDP. Um, Mala Samaila, why do you think um, our major parties, APC and PDP, are having issues at the same time? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's actually, you can predict that. I mean, uh, who wouldn't know APC is going to have problems uh, the moment uh, uh, President Muhammad Buhari is ending his tenure? Uh, you know, we can always tell that from the inception of the party that, look, this party is centered around just one person. Uh, we, we know we have we know so many straight, uh, strange bedfellows who came together, people who will never see eye to eye coming together because of one person. And of course, uh, once they know that this man is not going for re-election, that is going to bring about division. And you see, majorly or largely, the problems you're having in APC, both APC and PDP, is about 2003, which is. Yeah, a, a very common thing in, in in Nigeria where you have, in fact, we're just this is just an introduction to what's going to happen in, in another less than a year. You're going to be seeing the campaign, you know, people who feels okay, their interest is no longer being taken care of, and this party is they're going to move with their own followers to another party. So it's something you can always predict with Nigerian politicians that is going to happen, that more are still coming, you know. So really, it's it's, it's an internal issue where it's about interest. If my interest is not being taken care of. I fight it. If I can't fight, then I move to another party. So that, that majorly, that's the problem. Well, like most of these riders are the riders we've, we've discussed, discussed earlier, earlier. Okay. on other papers. But we need to go back to the front page of Leadership, the Leadership Friday, for other stories uh, of uh, interest. Now, the first uh, story below the mastered, local 10 Kasina local government areas under severe attacks, according to the state governor. Aminu Bello Masai, 10 oh. local governments under severe attacks daily. Yeah, in President Mamadou Buhari's home state of Kasina. It, it, it's unfortunate, really, that we have found ourselves in this. It, it, back in the days, this should have been what we make headlines of every newspaper in Nigeria, but it's become a norm. No, it's so really. We've been, we've been warned it, 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 against glamorizing it, 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 insecurity. Yeah, but of course. So you that see, the, 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 the criminal element will not be thinking they are winning. Uh, well, what are you? You, whether you, you they, they feel they are winning or not, they are making their money. That's their major goal. They are making money from it. So it doesn't matter if you like, don't even say that it happens. Ransoms are being paid on daily basis. You know, if the business is not thriving, people will desist from it. It's because this, that's the most thriving business in Nigeria today as we speak. And that's why we are having them in their groups. How many incidences of armed robbery have you heard in the recent times? It, it doesn't work. You must be a baby to still be an armed robber, an armed robber because that's not the way. The, the way to make money now is to go into kidnapping. Really? So the government can keep saying, oh, don't glamorize. But what I'm saying in essence is that there was a time where this kind of thing should have been a very strange thing that would make all the headlines to say, wow, how can that be? But today, everybody is going to bed like it's a normal thing i mean it will surprise you if you wake up on day and there's so, there's nothing like this it will be a surprise so really it's it's unfortunate that we have found ourselves and even talking about katana states the home base of the president you know the, the apc haven't come to power on that mantra because that was the major issue at the time the issue of insecurity and you know these people are coming or uh, deploy is to wipe out the northerners and all of that and all of that but now we can see clearly that a northerner isn't and even not just a northerner as a president but all the security uh, uh, chiefs are majorly from the north we see time in time out from the north and yet this killing has gone on you know you can't even stop it it's not like oh you're able to stem it to say we met the figure we met the number of killings we That's have been able to maintain it but this is skyrocketing, going soaring higher every day. The, 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 the figures are very, very bad. And just like they say, if it didn't happen to you, you wouldn't know what other people are going through. We have so many of those communities where people are actually uh, refugees. And, and these are instances of refugees that don't even, nobody's taking care of them. Because this is just the same way the government don't want you to glamorize it. They also don't want to 
take care of them so that you won't say, oh, there's a re 10 refugee camps in Nigeria, I mean, in Katsina, and because of that, they abandoned them. Mm -hmm. It's already unfortunate that we are here. All right, another story of interest is that of uh, the immediate past chairman mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. INEC, Professor Atai Rudiga. He has been vocal of recent, few days ago, mm -hmm. we had him warning Nigerians against voting APC, uh, either APC or PDP, PDP. you know, describing them as yes. same yeah. side of a coin. And today, he's also saying uh, restructuring is key to the 2023 general election. Mm -hmm. Restructuring. Do you believe that this country needs to be restructured? Uh, you, well, you see, different people have different definitions to their own restructuring. Okay. This one will come, this group will say, oh, this is your restructure. But what they have in mind, or their own idea of restructuring is different from this other group. So really, we need to dissect all these things to know. What should be the real idea of restructuring? Well, well for, for me, I feel, uh, you see, the agitations, every every violent agitations you see always start from peaceful protests and all of that, is bring these people together. You know, we can also call for a referendum or whatever it is, I will say, look, we found out that from these states, these are real representatives of the people who will come to say, what are your grievances? You understand? I, a lot, a lot, I mean, a hell lot of people will call for restructuring. They really feel, oh, let that just be a change from what is happening now. It, they can't put their fingers on the real thing. They, you understand? But they just want to change. But I feel the way to go is to say, look, we want to restructure this country your own idea of restructuring what do you want put it on the table you your own idea of restructuring what exactly do you want because you see all this how i want to restructure based on my own idea of what restructure should be let the government now harness all these ideas together to say okay it's majorly about where you feel the shoe is spinning you on the leg it's different from this person you understand because we're all not facing the same problem in the long run. Apart from issue of security, different regions, different states have, you know, peculiar problems that is actually not the same with this person. So really, is to now harness, match them, marry them together and say, okay, which way forward? This is what I want. This we can do. This we can do. We can make this demand. This because of this other person who is your neighbor we won't be able to do this because you also need to be fair to him. And you see, in the long run, everything will work out. But you can restructure, you finish restructuring now, this other region field, no. That wasn't what we meant by restructuring when you did it. So you, you have not done restructuring, then it has to be restructured again. And it's a vicious cycle we keep going back and forth on every time. Well, I think uh, a lot of Nigerians, look at you, have also always agreed on some key uh, aspect of restructuring. For example, they believe that, they believe that a federation, this federation called Nigeria, the power, its power is on unevenly structured, structured yeah. in favor of the central government. Mm -hmm. In the constitution, you will find 68 items in the exclusive list. Yeah. These are powers vested in the federal government, mm -hmm. while the, uh, the concurrent and the residual have less powers yeah. that cannot aid, that cannot affect or catalyze mm -hmm. development in states and, and local government. And people are saying, come, let's sit down, let's amend the constitution, yeah. bring out some powers, some mm -hmm. item in the exclusive list, bring them down to the concurrent yeah. or residual, so that mm -hmm. governments at the center and the local can also have something to do. Look at the issue of uh, mining. Mm -hmm. It's in the exclusive list. Mm -hmm. But these mineral resources we are talking about are actually deposited in the soil of states. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do you help them to develop these resources when they don't have the power to touch it? So a lot of things, then the issue of appointment, injustice, and the rest of them. So I think uh, we play a lot in this country. We deceive ourselves a lot. We actually know what we need to do. Yeah. But because of politics mm. or for political correctness, we are trying to dodge yeah. uh, the issues. Let's move to the next. Yeah, yeah. But and just to add to this, it's, it's a general belief that Nigeria presidency is the most powerful in the whole world. Exactly. So much power in there that it, it doesn't happen anywhere else. Exactly. But you see, the Similar people who are trying from outside, the moment they are getting there, they also want to enjoy that power <laughs> in its fullest. And forget. They have forget <laughs> they need to do that. Yo. So that's the point. You know, we look at federations, we, we claim we're copying yeah. from like the US, you don't find these things like this happen. Mm -hmm. We have federation like Brazil, mm -hmm. it's not like that. Well, the list story on the front page of leadership this morning, 
Be fair to Nigerians, Sultan tells political leaders. Be fair to Nigerians, Sultan tells political leaders. Of course, Sultan is the Amir Mumuni in Nigeria, yeah, yeah. Sultan, Sultan of Sokoto. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, these yeah, are part of the issues it's, to restructure. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a major issue, actually. Yeah, you see, and I'll give you just short uh, analysis of what happened uh, during the late uh, Meitam Masuli when the president sent for him to just come see. That was even a time before the president, this current president, was sworn in. He was still at that uh, house. Did they call it defense house or yes, right? defense house? Yeah, in Maitama. Yeah, and that was you know I was part of the people who followed him there to see the president, and he said something to him there. He said, "Sir, Maitama told telling the president to be at that time that sir, please, these people, if you will treat them the way they did, then there was actually or oh, there's no point for you to come." You understand and the way to go is that look for a reasonable evil man to make the secretary to the government of the federation and i will recommend someone who i know you have been together at party level you know he's been one of your supporters from the southeast and he's a credible man at least from sources and he suggested Obunaya Ono to him and he said no problem sir we'll definitely look into it sir and the next time you know when yeah uh, this you are calling them fake news there's a list of the cabinet members started flying around. His name was not there, but it was a different name. So Mr. Masule quickly called for another meeting to say he wants to see this man before things go, I mean, go out of hand. And he still reminded him the same thing. Then he came or say, oh, sir, it wasn't like I didn't want to do it. It was, I don't want to mention the name he mentioned at that time that he said, no, uh, these people, they were anti-Buhari. They didn't never voted. They, well, this, so, is this, this, this is Nigeria. Eh? <laughs> you need to give people sense of belonging, belonging. Because, because if you see i don't belong here then you let me be if you understand so that will be, and you see and perception is very key in governance even if you don't like me let it be no shown that you like me if that's perception management and it goes a long way in the psyche of people to say because at that time everybody tells you shut up what else do you want you didn't vote for him but he gave you a secretary to the government you understand that's to show that you are exactly. part of nigeria but you don't rub it on people's face and say no nobody is fit from a particular region to be part of this that calls for more agitations and that's where we are today that's one of the problems because you refuse to manage what you ought to have managed ab initial it becomes a bigger problem and i've even said this at another forum before to say look some of these issues if the political leaders just like sultan is saying are being fair some of the crisis we have in some of the states wouldn't be here you understand because you have insecurity votes let me give you an instance of Zamfara. Maybe some Fulani settlement got their cattle rustled. And, you know, the government is looking the other way and telling them, okay, we are trying to trace them. You receive security votes. How much does it take you if you remove 100 million from that security vote and go and buy cows? By the time you share 100 million cow uh, worth of cows, uh, you understand? It goes a long way to say, oh, we have a government in place, and they don't have any reason to go pick up arms to say, now that I don't have anything to do. Therefore, you, you allow them, you abandon them, then they become bandits in the long run. And we're paying them money. And we're, you, and understand? Them you, you, you understand? So really, that, that's one of the issues. So now we have a long way to go. Yeah, and course. on that note, we come to the end of today's edition of Inside Nigeria. Yeah. Many thanks to Samayla Musa, and of Thank course, Samayla Musa is an Abuja-based public affairs analyst. And my co-host this morning, Luka Iya, Thank you, sir. Okay, I will look forward to see you on Monday. Yeah, sure. And to you out there, listener, thank you for listening. Make a day with us Monday for a fresh edition of Inside Nigeria. Bye-bye for now. <laughs>